if you dream it, you can do it. And that's, it's not a cheesy speech, it's true. And of course, the one of each of you athletes. How are you guys all doing? It's a great week. We're on July now. And we are so lucky that we're going to have Gloria as our special guest to learn more of what she did to accomplish what she just finished within a month. And I am so excited to have Gloria here from Texas, who's going to share how she did because before i actually tell more about her because i'm just so excited let me welcome gloria vasquez from texas thank you so much gloria there you go yes i am so happy uh because uh let me just share to you of what she actually has recently achieved this is how she is now all right so she came from zero triathlon experience and actually finished two races in one weekend. And that was only last Friday, finishing 1,000 meter ocean swim without a wetsuit. And next day she woke up again and finished sprint triathlon. And this was her first sprint triathlon. And again, in the ocean, without a wetsuit and she didn't even plan for it and but she wasn't like this go-getter before were you did you ever think gloria that you would actually do this one last weekend what you achieve did you ever think that it's gonna happen so quick first of all coach thank you for having me it's very very um a blessing to be with you and whoever is listening i'm very thankful for this opportunity and also i want to let you know that no i didn't have that in my mind um i was going to explore the water on a one-on-one -on -one with you that's it that's it so uh actually gloria uh i did not know gloria so i i received this email i received this email and that was a night of end of May. So that's about like June 1st already when I read it, June 1st. And she said, first, I would like to be honest and let you know that I am far from being a competitive triathlete. I started back in 2017 running and then incorporating the biking and swimming with very humble beginnings. And she shared her dreams. I dream of swimming with confidence the technique will allow me to conquer my fear and weakness. She has a vision board, which we're going to show in a bit, where I see myself swimming relaxed, calm, and peace. But in the middle of this, there's a structure and training plan that I am lacking. So this was how she was then, okay, sharing her dreams. Since you said about the uh, fear and weakness, so I want to know more, like, what were you feeling? You, you mentioned fear and weakness a month ago. When you emailed that, like it was a long email. Like, can you share more of like what fear, what were you feeling? What kind of fear that is? Um, I have a shortness of breath. Of breath. Okay. So that was the first um, obstacle to overcome. Then you realize that you have sinking legs. Then you realize that you don't use your arms and you don't use your legs and your body position is horrible. So you are just like a, a heavy body in the water, not feeling the water. Gotcha. So all of that together was a lot to accomplish. And I knew I was not going to be able to do it without any structure and sure. discipline and the right workshops that accommodate to my needs. Gotcha. And understanding and visualizing how to execute them. And that's how... I come into terms with myself that I needed the right program and the right coach. Gotcha. And I don't, I'm going to be honest with you. I've been following for more than a year. Um, 
following all your activities and your uh, over a year. Yeah, over a year. I okay. been following me on Facebook. And uh, during the COVID year, I signed up for this race that it was my dream race, Escape of the Cape. Yeah. And I visualized that race for me because, this one. first of all, there are two challenges there. Mm -hmm. Number one challenge was the swimming, right? But it has a little epic additional item in there, which is the jump. Right. And to fall in there, to let your body go with that a strong mind that you're going to be fine reaching the water yeah. and the impact, that is one of the first that not only in the swimming activity, but in life, you have to overcome. That's so I relate that with my personal life in every angle, professionally, um, in my family, around my activity. And I thought put to myself, if I can do that, I can do anything. Mm. But in order to do that, I need to start at the very humble beginnings and I need to find the proper way because I'm That's conscious it. about my weaknesses and, and what I need to That's do. It. Because what you don't know, it's exactly what you need to understand. Right, right. So you said a lot of different things there. What I got is that it looks like your swimming is your weakness. Swimming is the most fearful thing. Fearful. It's not just I weakness. I my bike, I can still land on the ground. Okay. Right? <laughs> that and if I run, me. I can still lay down and crawl if I have to. But in the water, if I give up, I drown. Gotcha. If I don't move, yeah. if I lose control, if I lose focus, if I just give up, then I'm done. Got it. That is the most challenging area. I hear you. So anyone who's listening or viewing this, hashtag live. And if you're listening or viewing replay, hashtag replay, anyone here who actually feels the same way as Gloria, you know, it's not really just weakness. We're talking about fear here, fear. And to, to Gloria, and actually I could relate to Gloria. She said, of course, it's not fun to fall, fall from the bike. Right. But she said, She's, it looks like you're more of scared of drowning. Is that yeah. right? Scared of drowning. Yeah. And then are you also scared? Like, cause other athletes also would say, well, you know, when I'm running, I can actually stop. But when I'm swimming, I feel like I couldn't stop. Is that something I, I fear too? Well, uh, before this week, past week, okay. I <laughs> didn't know what it was going to go to water planet. That's true. Okay. That's another planet. It's yeah. a different element and an unknown element where algae, yeah. fishes, strange elements are around you and you need to be under control, not to panic because right. something navigates around your head or your legs or you feel that weird sensation. That's yes. one. And then you need to keep control to keep breathing, bubble, bubble, breathe, bubble. <laughs> There's so many things that you're thinking. So many things, right? And then... Um, Sometimes you don't know if your body is going to float and, and keep gliding. I didn't know anything about that. So nothing at all? Nothing and, at all. Yeah. Because then, in the open water is 100% different than in the pool. In the pool, true. you can always reach out right, right. from the court, something yeah. that out, somebody is going to be nearby in a second. Yeah, true. Mm -hmm. So we actually have Tony, Tunita. Welcome, Tunita, Tony. So if you're just viewing it, hashtag live, and let's say hello to Gloria. As Tony said, every time I get into the water, I want to give up. Who else feel like Tony? Did you feel that, that way when you were in open water? Did you feel like, oh my God, this is too much before you actually emailed or got some help? Did you feel like, oh, this is too much? It's not like running. Yes, uh, it is. Uh, it was a lot. Uh, it was a that lot. was my first call quest to conquer in the mindset. So gotcha. to start with, the moment I reach out to you is because I was determined to overcome that fear, to overcome that challenge and to commit. Yes. Because uh, the, without the commitment, you don't uh, grow into the discipline of, uh, number one, there's so many areas that you need to understand, like body maintenance, the right workouts, they're right, uh, and, and as you grow into it, you need to have a strategy as well. How a what? A strategy. Okay, a strategy. strategy. Gotcha, <laughs> right strategy. Okay, got it. The, oh. I think the most important part is the mindset. Yep, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Yeah, the mindset is the most important area that um, you need to work with. Uh, otherwise, you won't move into the next one. Absolutely. In fact, you know, you won't have committed to actually even sign up to this or not even think that, you know, because it looks like you're using also, you see that, hey, if I could actually conquer this fear here, I could conquer any fears. Exactly. Right? Is that what you see? Okay. Yes. You feel the same thing. I think Tom, Tom also feel the same thing. Guess what? I feel, I felt the same way too. So I'm glad actually I did not give up, you know, because I, I, I came from not knowing how to swim either. And uh, so like here, you know, coming from zero triathlon experience with 12 weeks. So when she actually contacted me, guess what? She has not gone to open water at all. Like she has no experience. So what she did, she signed up. She said like, I think, oh, that's, if I overcome my fear there, I'm going to overcome any fears in life. Even though I have not, I don't know how to swim in open water yet. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. It looks like that's what happened. Is that right, Gloria? Yes, that's right. Uh, yes, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something really quick that I think is okay. We have a special project at work and one okay. of my is kind of a little bit nervous about it. And I thought to myself, uh, well, if I can swim in the open water and somebody slap on my head and I'm still under control and somebody's That's pushing cool. me and pulling my feet and I deviate for the right, from the right view, buoy and I went back into the right direction and ended up instead of swimming a thousand meters, but 1293 meters and I still make it, I can do this too. Like you can do anything. That's awesome. I can do anything. Tinina said, I'm okay in my wetsuit, but could not imagine swimming without it, which is what you did. So, so yeah, so let me, I hear you, Tanita. Oh my God. Like I was, don't take my wetsuit from me. That is my, <laughs> that is my comfort. That's my blanket. So it was last month. It was, you have 20, 12 weeks until race. So, you know, you said there's fear. And you know, you here you you only needed to do 0.35 mile swim, 12 mile bike, 5k run, and you had 12 weeks, right? And mm -hmm. what I wanted to ask you is that at the time, it's not just about swimming. Also, you were on your own. You were swimming at least three times a week, biking mm -hmm. during the weekends, running is my less favorite. I struggle the most in this activity. Tell me more about that. Was that did you think that you know you're just a slow runner, slow cyclist, and not knowing how to swim at all? Is that how well, you felt? That honestly, I'm a slow in everything. You're slow in everything. <laughs> all the three ones because I was running 17, 18 minutes mile mile per hour, and I was stuck in there, and I was just like feeling very heavy. I guess my body was just pushing me, but not really advancing. Um, but I was doing it. The biking, I was uh, comfortable uh, in, in a flat lane, um, not too many hills because that was the safest way to do it. Uh, the swimming, uh, definitely uh, a lot of improvement needed in there just to catch up with the breathing. Yeah. Uh, but then um, liter by liter with the uh, mindset, the right discipline, the right alter, um, uh, incorporation of the technique and alternating the breaths. Uh, between biking and running and then biking and swimming. Um, it's unbelievable how you build a strength, how you build your confidence liter by liter. And there were a few wor uh, workouts like the March, uh, third March, that helped me to move from that 18, 17 minutes per mile to a 14, 13. And I was extremely surprised how that single uh, drill helped me out to realize how you have to move your hips and expanding your legs and extending your high. It will help you to reduce the time. You were surprised. Yeah, you were so I was yeah, amazingly surprised. Yeah, because you did finish a full marathon not long, not long ago either because you started late, right? Yeah. I think 2019 when you first finished your first full marathon and you said you were stuck with 17, 18 minutes per mile. Yes. Yes. And then, you know, so uh, I'm going to just share to everyone what happened. So, so Gloria did a test one time. And then I said, and then after that test, I coached her. I'm like, I coached her the proper technique, just like swimming. You can be faster. 
with a little bit of tweak on your running to make it easier. And unfortunately at the time, also when I was new, you know, I would just run, run a lot of marathons. I did not know that it can be easier. And so Gloria did that and she was surprised because then she started actually racing and, you know, trying to pass other runners along the way. So what she did, she applied the techniques, executed the drills. There's also drills for running, just like swimming. You can, you know, there's loopholes how to get faster, how to train right so you don't get injured. So now she said, Gloria, I have been stuck running at 16 to 15, 17 minutes per mile. After that, what she did, guess what? Her fastest one mile became 14 minutes per mile. Her fastest one kilometer became 1344. And she was so shocked for the 400 meters. She was running 13, 17 minutes per mile. That was only June 15. I think it's only been like a week, seven days. Yeah. I mean, just what it's not. Okay. So a lot of athletes also, and I, I really wish I knew this one before because I'm more of a hard worker. <laughs> well, you are too, right? But you're smart. Cause you get, you know, you, with one week she got faster. I wish I could have gone faster in just a little, you know, someone I'm wearing, I'm hearing, Hey, just do this. And so she did that. And what I like about her is that she's coachable. Congrats on your big accomplishment. Gloria said, Tony, you motivate me. She, he, had, uh, let me see, Tony, are you the one who's actually about to do your first triathlon as well? I know I, there's several Tony in the group, but I want to make sure. So yeah, see, I'm telling you, Glory, you're motivating people. So besides the swimming, I know there's other challenges. And I'm gonna tell you with Gloria, I don't know, she doesn't have excuses. I mean, she told me she's 57 years old, okay? But that, you know, some other athletes like, oh, I'm 57, I can't do anything else. I'm 57, I can't deal with Garmin, with technology, okay? I'm, you know, like they, they use the age. Right, but for Gloria, so for her, it's hey, it's time. It's time for me to play. <laughs> so, so you know, she doesn't have excuse. When she actually it was only last month, she did not have Garmin watch. She was using some other watch, which I couldn't figure out. Also, how I'm gonna know how she's doing it? So we're like a lot of phone call, a lot of text messages, and I said like Gloria, if you want to invest, the main thing I hope that you could do, I'm, I'm, you know, because it's not really a requirement, because I know it could be like budget wise, right? So she got her Garmin. So the next thing is that we need to learn. We need to teach Gloria how to use it. Mm -hmm. So to me, as long as I see the data, doesn't matter how, you, you know, let's just do our best, right? So, yeah. so you know, so she was also just, I don't know, who else here are technologically challenged? It's like, coach, it's already three sports and I need to learn technology. I've never been in front of the computer. It's, that's not Gloria, of course, but there are other athletes like just, I don't want technology. I just want to do swim, bike, run. That's already a lot for me. So she's technologically challenged. She did not have cadence meter. She actually did not know what cadence was then. Yeah, I have to teach her of how to change the gearing. That's how really new triathlete she, uh, she was. That was only a month ago. So I said like, if you, if you, you know, do this, uh, you do this, I, I use the words that she could actually even understand. I can't use the, you know, the the complicated one. If you do this, your kid is going to go up. That means, so it's really, you know, I, I'm more of a chameleon. I like depending on the skill level. So she has definitely zero open water skills, uh, open water experience. I'm going to show it to you right now. It was only June 19. That was exactly what's now 21st. That was her first open water swim. And she was so happy. And yeah. the main reason, unfortunately, there are some states where and it's really hard to get some open water. Who here lives where in its all mountains? You know, I, I used to, uh, in, in the Philippines, I lived in, uh, in the city. I did not have access to open water. So I did not know how to swim. I was scared of the open water. Like I had no chance to even go to the pool because there it's more for rich kids. So, so for Gloria, it's similar when she didn't, it, it takes two hours just to drive. California, it's, we're really, you know, we're actually blessed. So it's, it's some people, it's just like 
across the street. <laughs> to me, I still have to drive. But for Gloria, it was only June 19. That was just about a month ago. Okay. So that's why. So challenges, zero open water experience, nothing. She has a wetsuit, but it did not fit well. And that was one of the reasons why she did not wear her wetsuit here. It was, she, you know, she wants it. She actually tried to borrow from people. Like, nothing's going to stop me. If it doesn't fit, let me see if I can rent. Let me see if I can borrow. When she came to California, she did not plan to actually race. It's really just to see me in person. Guess what? When um, it was only last Friday, she wanted to register. Last, It was just last Friday. She wanted to register. She's like, oh, coach, the registration is closed online. Let me see if I can go in person <laughs> and register online. I don't want to be somebody's lunch even. I was swimming in a lake. I hear you. Yeah, there could be alligators or crocodiles in Florida as well. Yep, Tom, I hear you. Um, so yeah, so, so Gloria, it was close registration online. That didn't stop her. I don't know, for some reason, it's just like, I'm going to go after it, whatever. I don't have wetsuit. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to go for it. <laughs> registration close. Well, I'm going to see if I can actually swim in person. I mean, register in person. And she was able to register. Okay. What else did she encounter? Uh, she works 10 hours every day. A lot of outfits, like, I don't have a lot of time. Okay. Yeah, she works 10 hours every day. And actually, in fact, other athletes also coach, because what she did, she was on triathlon and I have the 30 day swim boot camp, which can be demanding, okay, of time because it's focused. But she said, like, coach, I really want to learn the proper way to swim. And I'm gonna show you actually examples of that. So what else? Oh, lack of confidence, knowledge, and experience. Tell me more about confidence. Well, in my mind, I visualize that I will uh go into the water right but uh it's a dream no it's a dream so i decide to catch the dream and to execute the dream and that's why i decide to sign up for the one-on-one -on -one because i was watching all the uh, workshops that you hold every weekend and i saw myself there and thanks God, everything was put into place and I was able to organize my trip uh, to uh, coordinate the dates. And there's people around that I uh, always is a blessing. I have a very dearest friend who lives in Long Beach mm. who was uh, hosting me and, and, dry, and uh, giving me access to a car to drive everywhere I needed to go. So that was the first thing to facilitate the dream right? So God puts people around you to make it happen. And the time is perfect. And so, so people was also motivating me, uh, cheering up for me. And I just needed to do the work. And when I first met you at the, that Sunday, um, and I see the very short and I'm like, oh, this is what I used to see on Facebook. Aww. And I'm here now. And again, the wetsuit was too tight and very uncomfortable because the day before when I arrived, I was testing it and I couldn't move. So I, <laughs> I went there without the wetsuit because I knew I was not going to make move. it. And it was early in the morning and me, I'm not really used to the cold water, to be honest with you. I don't think anybody- in Texas. Is, but, yeah. yeah. So I put my feet in there and, okay, I'm here. You have to go follow because you go, 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 and yes. you go, 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 go. Yeah. And, okay, I can deal with this water. And then once you're there, you forget about it. And what I love about it is that I was able to move. Jennifer said, Gloria, badass. Tony with a heart. Awesome. <laughs> love it. So, you know, I'm having goosebumps because, Gloria, I could not do what you did back in the days. I was so scared and I know how you felt, but you were so good. So let me just show you. She, I said, so I was giving some mindset talk here, giving them some skills. I'm gonna fast forward. So. <laughs> I was having fun because I'm making them jump. But so she was part of that. That was her second open water swim. Okay, <laughs> swim start. I made her do that three times. So here, this one was only a month ago. All right. So so in Feisty Fox Tribe, 
uh, she was in 30 Day Swim Boot Camp and she posted all these videos here. I hope I picked the right one. Yeah, so here, this is one of the videos. Okay. That was. All right. And as you can see, I have feedbacks here. Of, <laughs> it doesn't, doesn't look like you're having fun there, Gloria. So there's a lot of feedback like, okay, you're crossing over, you're slapping the water, you're dropping the, uh, yeah, so your hands is under there. So it was like a lot of feedback. And I, oh, she has an angry face. <laughs> but <laughs> guess what? She had a smiley face still, thumbs up. That was a month ago. Okay, that was a month ago. So, and then I asked her, okay, Gloria, I need you to do the breathing without even moving. She does train hard, swim, bike, run, not just swimming. If I tell her I need you to run, she will run, even though, you know, she'll make time. But then what she did learn is body maintenance. Can you tell us more about that, Gloria? So other well, athletes, body I, maintenance. I was not really involved about the body maintenance. I was one of those um, athletes who before going to run barely um, uh, practice any kind of a a strange um, exercises, but not really, not uh -huh. really paying attention to certain areas for each uh, activity. And I learned so much about how to prevent injury and to have the flexibility to go for either biking, swimming, or running. Every activity has a specific drills to practice before so you can warm up and be flexible before you start, right? Um, and that is uh, so much appreciated because Obviously, it's not, the, I mean, we are all um, uh, subject to get injured, but uh, 57, the probability is, is higher, right? And I'm here to continue this until 90 plus years old. So I want to do that for a long term uh, an inspiration. goal. And I need to take care of myself. So those 5, 10, 15 minutes before every activity are crucial so you can uh, respect your body not only in the body maintenance, but also your nutrition, which complement each other. Uh, and for that, uh, I reach out to coach Angrila because I was feeling pain mm -hmm. on my uh, high flux. So and this one, is, yeah. So this one was actually, you know, she was telling me that, okay, coach, I'm having pain here. So this is because she's in Texas, right? She's in Texas. I have not met her in person at the time. So, but I told her, it's not just about working hard. It's making sure that you actually can withstand all the back-to-back -back workouts because especially for athletes who really works hard, put in the training, the thing, the high risk there is injury. And without knowing how to do body maintenance, so body maintenance, as I explained in the other training that we did last week, body maintenance is something that you will do before an injury happens because even when I was an athlete, you know, I only do something. I only see a physical therapist when I'm already injured. And that's too late. That's called rehab. So what I want my athletes is to actually, and all of you who's listening to this one, is actually for you to do exercises before that injury happens. More of preventive maintenance or body maintenance, just like brushing your teeth. You brush your teeth. Not when you already have tooth decay, right? So it's actually brushing your teeth every meal or as often as possible. Same thing as this one, okay? Same thing as this one. And she was telling me, coach, I'm feeling pain, but you know what? I'm just gonna go through it, coach. I can still do the work. I said, no, 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 no. I don't want you to do that. No, not with Feisty Facts Coaching, especially if you communicate it. So she communicates it and she started showing. So, you know, hey, I need you to do this. This is when it's actually with lacrosse ball. Uh, touching the glutes there. And I said, I need you to go through the trigger points. So now, well, sometimes the athlete doesn't really know what trigger points is for a specific, you know, pain or discomfort. And that's where and I help. And also the coaching team, we have the physical therapist, also professional masseuse who gives us advice. It's like, what's the best way? All right. So not just that with the foam roller in different positions, kind of like sometimes I'm like, wow, this is actually works. It's actually cheaper than, you know, on all the gadgets that we see online. And the next thing is also here, we have here, we're in, we, 
this is actually, by the way, is the Feisty Fox member site. So if like, for example, that was knee pain. So what they would do is actually just go here and learn more what needs to be done, body maintenance, demo and hands-on. So what they do is they're like, okay, I'm gonna go to that 608, okay? And I actually do that. So other than that is that, let me see, all right, body maintenance, and then just basically, you know, as long as you communicate. And my suggestion, everyone, if you're watching this one, I hope you get this one. Do not wait until something is like so hard for you to prevent from getting worse, okay? If you feel something, even though you don't know what it is, you gotta do something about it, okay? Uh, there's a lot of answers like, oh, suck up the pain. <laughs> and guess what? Next day you can't run anymore, <laughs> all right? So I'm, I'm really happy, especially for Gloria. Who, she said 57 years old, which is could be, yeah, sure, a high risk, but I think anyone is high risk especially those athletes who are actually not knowing of how to take care of ourselves. I wanted to show you her mental fitness board because we don't just help just swim, bike and run. We want to make sure that our athlete knows how to train properly, how to train properly, nutrition, body maintenance, and next thing is mental fitness, which is very important. And everyone getting this one, I hope you guys are taking notes because this is what Gloria did in a month, okay? And you are you can do this one right now. Vision board. Is this something that you have? Is it on the back? Can you can you point? I think it's in your uh, I can see it behind you. Where is it? Uh, behind yeah, you? Can you point it? I mean, yeah. Um there you go. There you go. Yes. Man, Gloria, you have your calendar there. You have your vision board. Gloria is the woman. You're such a badass, Gloria. So this is actually that our best plus your best, our win, injury three, passion. Do you always uh, see this one? Yes, it's right one. here every day. So you always forward. look at it, see yes. it? Awesome. Commitment. There's no way I can escape. And the people that is there is also an inspiration for me. And Chris, um, you know, he's the first Down syndrome who achieved the Ironman, who become Ironman last year. Tony. And yeah. that is amazing. And he, I'm sure he knows he has a cost. That's he amazing. knows what the impact he has made, but he makes a difference for everybody. He has made it for me too. Gotcha. You, you are such, you don't even know, Gloria, but you're on a serious athlete here. <laughs> All right, because even well, though you're uh, I have a, I have something to tell you. Um, when I'm talking to my kids, for instance, and when I address that I was going to be in a, an intense training because I wanted to do well and safety, I told them, I need your support, I need your encouragement, and I need you to check on, on me every day how am I doing. Oh, and remember, nice. Because I am a triathlete. So consider yourself that a full triathlete because you look at these elite triathletes, right? And you, there's another dimension. But age group triathletes, uh, it's an important mission for to leave a legacy for the ones that come behind you. And those are my kids and the ones that come after who are the future generations. And that is my legacy to my family, uh, that anything you put in your mind, it doesn't matter what it is. Everybody has different goals and mindsets and, and, and um, dreams, but it doesn't matter what, what that is and at what level. If you dream it, you can do it. And that's, it's not a cheesy speech, it's true. You just need to visualize it. And sometimes between where you are and the dream, there is a gap. That's the journey. So during this month, it's been the journey, which has been amazing for me. And I haven't yet to the escape of the cave. Not yet. Yeah. yeah. It's but been only a month. Get there, it's going to be fabulous. I love it. So if you're listening to this or you're viewing us, don't you just love Gloria? I wish you could just talk and talk. If you're listening to this right now, hashtag live. If you're listening to it as a replay, hashtag replay, my heart is just warm listening to you. If you can dream it, you can do it, yes. right? And actually she, she said something. 
she said, I am a triathlete. You are a triathlete even before the finish line. Yes. You are doing a triathlete. You need to wear the hat of triathlete and you have to believe that. You are swimming. You have to wear the swimmer, okay? The best swimmer and be that in action right now. Not when you get there, not when you learn the technique, but actually do it in action, right? You have, you have the capability to actually do that. So what I wanted to show you, this one. This one is a, one of the breakthroughs of Gloria. So let me show you a quick one. So as you saw earlier, she needs, she needed, she needs to jump off the sheet, you know, like in 12 weeks, she needs to do this one. Do we have a big boat like this for training? Like we, we basically just gonna have to do our best to mimic the scenario. So she came in California, said, you know what? We don't have a big boat, but we have something like this. I need you to do this. All right. <laughs> so this is one of the training. So, so this is just one of them. You, do you know what I asked Gloria to do last a day before when she signed up, I asked her, dum, 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 I asked her to jump 11 times. But it's not just about the jump. I wanted her to visualize, see, like there's a lot of other scared, nervous athlete right behind, beside you, behind you, nervous, and you are, I can do this. <laughs> like, I told her, I asked her, Gloria, it's not about just you jumping. And it's not just about mindset. Yes, mindset is good, but I need you to feel, believe that you are about to jump that amazing big boat that you've been dreaming since last year, <laughs> right? Because you signed up last year and you're going to jump. It's about time of all the hard work that you've been putting in. You're about to jump. How are you gonna feel? Feel that, feel everything. Nervous, feeling strong, feeling confident, be that. And I need you to do that 11 times. <laughs> Were you surprised? Yeah. <laughs> I was counting, counting and counting. <laughs> so she did, but you know, so again, you know, Gloria, when you jump there, anything can happen. Someone can slap you on your head. You lose your goggles. Gloria, on the 10th jump, I need you to remove your goggles. <laughs> and I need you to swim. Do it. What did you do, Gloria? How did it feel when you heard me ask you to do that? Mm -hmm. uh, I just did it. I didn't think about it. I just did it. I, do, I, I don't have time to think about it. I just, I was just counting and counting and exploring every, every jump, learning how different I land on the, on the water to understand better uh, my jump and then going back and at the 10 jump and then I just pulled down my goggles and I said, okay, let's feel, because the water was very salty. So I already knew that it was very salty. And it's okay, I can handle this. Because uh, on a bigger jump, the probabilities uh, uh, that the goggles just pull out and even your cap is higher. So I need to be ready to react to that. And it went well, I have a, I mean, I was happy to do it. Um, I, got, I was tired because the polo, uh, polo drill, water polo was tiring, but it made me, it gave me so much confidence that I was not aware at the moment how, how that pushed me and gave me the confidence to look for that 1,000 meters and the triathlete. That was the key point for me to just go and sign. Gotcha. So it actually was one of the turning points that built your confidence. It's something that you would never ever think that you would do until like I asked you to do that. Yeah, because your heart rate went up. It went to 169, 170. I was looking at it at every jump. Oh, she's jumping. Oh, she's still recovering because I was looking at the data of your heart rate when you were jumping. 
Because after that 11 jumps, I still ask her to swim. I think 1,000 or 500, 900. She it didn't swim. Like, uh, that was actually my longest um, <laughs> swimming in that day. And it was like 1,200 something. 1,200 after her jumping several times. So, you know, wh why do we do this one? Because the thing is that if you remember her race was in 12 weeks, what's in 12 weeks. Okay. So let's go here. Her race was in 12 weeks and like, how long is her swim? It's only 0.35. That's 600, about 600 yards. Yes. She did 1200. She, she jumped what 11 times. The main reason that I wanted her to do it is basically to just overcome any possibility that she may encounter there. Something that she thought she would never do, but then now she did it in training. I asked her to remove the goggles, but if it happens, she knows how to feel it. I asked her to jump 11 times so she can feel her heart rate and she knows how to treat it and she knows how to she would know how to sight. I asked her to still swim 1,000 yards and she swam 1,200 yards because at the race, even though, even though it was only 600 yards, she has a lot of people around her. There's so many distraction, external di distraction that can happen. There's the wave and that was just herself, right? So my suggestion, everyone, if you guys are listening or viewing this is that just go at it in training because because what i want you to do is what when you show up at the race you can tell yourself <laughs> i did everything i can i did my best in training i'm confident i can do this it's time to smile it's yeah. time it's time to thrive do not be one of those athletes well, coach, I'm, it's my first, it's my first sprint triathlon. I just want to enjoy it. Come on now. You know what? If it's your first, you want to enjoy and thrive. You don't want to be in survival mode because it's not fun. You know, they're saying, yeah, you know, you go like survive, right? But why would you want to survive if you can do something right now, take action, so instead of survival mode, you'd be like, rawr, rawr, I can conquer this. I did my best, right? So anyone, are you guys getting it? So what I'm trying to say is that, yes, with Feisty Fox Coaching, if you really want to enjoy it, um, to me, at least my mindset is that, and it also depends on the athlete. If the athlete is, you know, welcoming it, hey, coach, I really want to enjoy my race and I want to thrive, not survival mode, I'll give you the right training and you'll be ready for sure. And guess what? If, because the thing is that, uh, Clo uh, Gloria, sorry, Gloria, Gloria actually wanted to achieve it in 12 weeks, her first triathlon. Okay, so we were here, 12 weeks. She had no idea that she was gonna do two races. She did not even plan to actually sign up for it. She did not even, you know, she did not even expect that she's going to do it without wetsuit, but because of that confidence, because of the training, because she was doing her best, you know, it's not perfect. Like if you look at her training plan, not all of them, she, <laughs> she did it because she was so busy with her work. But do you think that you, you did your best, Gloria? Yes. I'm, I'm very humble to tell you that I did my best, but also I have to recognize that with your strong coaching, with your strong dedication and follow up every day, every single day, even when here in El Paso was raining and I couldn't drive my bike on the weekend, we figured a way to do something. And every day we were active, following up, tight, 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 tight. And that's emotional support, physical and mental support earn me the confidence to go above and beyond uh, awesome. my abilities and i know that i can do better and better uh, breaking that wall that uh, sometimes you don't even know at what level you can break it and go beyond 
one of those that I can relate to that is I imagine myself running consistently because you know where I'm coming from, 17, 18 mi minutes per mile running. Yes, yes. I am, I am confident now that I can go lower and be in the 13, which for some athletes might be too high. But for me, it will be an amazing accomplishment for my heart rate. And after the, after the biking, it will be amazing that I can stay in that pace. Yep. Because I know that I still have the opportunity to break that. When I get out of the water, I am very empowered and very energetic <laughs> in the bike. Yep. But when I get out of the bike, it's another story. My legs are heavy. Um, mm -hmm. Like, it, they don't just, move as I, I, I command them to move. Yeah. They don't yeah. obey me. <laughs> they don't follow. <laughs> yeah. So I am very grateful for all that because I know... I can certainly tell you 100% that you did your best and I put my best and we win. And there you we go. Win. And we win. It was only last Sunday when she actually conquered and entered through the waves. So she was actually already on the, uh, up through the waves and then now she swim. <laughs> so that was her. All right, so now she's swimming. So that was, that's her now. We that's got the waves. <laughs> yes, yes. So yeah, I, I am so like really inspired by you, Gloria. I was just looking at the calendar of when she, e when I read her email, it was only June 1st where I did not know her. June 8th, she started coaching. June 15th. That was the only time. It was only a month ago when she started learning how to uh, swim properly. June 19, first open water swim. That was really a month ago. Swim boot camp. She did the 11 times jump. It was only last Friday. She did her first 1,000 open water swim race without a wetsuit in the ocean. July 17, the next day. It's crazy because her, her first open water swim was in the evening. And I told her, Gloria, I really need you to sleep because you have a race first thing tomorrow morning. And that was her first sprint triathlon. And then next day, 18. So I know you have been doing a lot of activities on top of your, out, you know, non-sport. How are you feeling today, like Gloria? Are you feeling sick, injured, low energy? How do you feel? Like, because we um, did a lot physically. I feel strong. Nice. I am strong. I, I and and again, I'm com I'm uh, humble to say it, but I honestly feel strong. And that comes from the proper nutrition, the nutrition. proper consistent exercise, um, not overdoing it. Uh, some people might say, you were killing your body. <laughs> but uh, honestly, I, I was so blessed that I didn't have pain. That pain wow. that I had before, it was not there. My muscles were reacting to me with so much grace. They, they helped me a lot. So I am right now, uh, I am relaxed, but I'm ready to go back to the pool because the county. <laughs> there you go. We're not going to hold you much more, but I just have like, let's say just two questions. So now, cause I know you said you wanted to finish a full Ironman before yeah. you're 60. So that's yeah. uh, three years from mm -hmm. now. Cause you're 57. You finished your first sprint. You said you're going to finish in 12 weeks, but to finish it in a month. And you've seen like how much you have grown. Do you think, do you see more clear now of how of the full Ironman? I know we're still far because you're on sprint, but you said full Ironman in 60 years. So does it become more clear to you in your head? Like if I did this one, I thought it's going to take me 12 weeks. I thought I couldn't even, you know, I didn't even have confidence then. I didn't know how to swim and I'm hurting then. How do you feel about your goal, your dream of actually becoming a full Ironman finisher before you turn 60? I am definitely committed to it. I have to do a um, full marathon uh, that's in the journey. I think before the full Ironman, I need to do the full marathon and interacting so I can incorporate that because again, the running is one of my biggest challenges. The cycling, it's 
very joyful, very joyful. Oh, okay. And the swimming now, I'm gonna tell you what the swimming means for me. It means to be in control, relax, calm, and in peace with myself. And it's like talking to God in the middle of nowhere. Is that and how you feel right I, now? Huh? Is that how you see swimming right now? Yes. Oh, already? Yes. So you feel it calm? So, because that's what you emailed me. That was your dream. Mm -hmm. So but it's a long journey because the, the longer the distance, the yeah. unexpected water, because we have calm waters, wavy, rocky waters, middle sized waters, right? So obviously in an Ironman, you're going to have different situations. Sometimes it's a lake and dirty lake, horrible yeah, lake, sure. right? Sure. Uh, that's yeah. another challenge. But as long as I am calm, I can do the rest. There you go. So it seems it sounds like you you can you, you can do anything now. Is that how you feel? You can just do anything. I'm just gonna. It's like you're in the candy store. I I know that I have to do the work. I know yeah. that I have to be very disciplined and very consistent. And I know that if I meet those in addition to my body maintenance and my body maintenance uh -huh, and my nutrition i will accomplish that yeah, true. it is in a strong commitment because of the time consumption yes. but uh if you put your agenda in place mm -hmm. everything complements because i wouldn't feel accomplished in the rest of my life if i don't do this mm, got it got it all right so yeah, Tony, good for you. Excuse me, Shane, <laughs> you're right. I, yeah, you don't want to just complete it. You want to thrive it. So you could be looking great also, yeah, in the picture, right? Make sure <laughs> that you get a finisher's, pitch, uh, finisher's photo. So this is again, Gloria here. Gloria, what I wanted to ask you last is that I hope you still remember how you were just a month ago. Someone who doesn't have confidence, someone who didn't know open water swim, not having experience, having this fear, having this, you know, like stuck with 16, 17 minutes per mile slow, they not having the Garmin and just very busy at work. You, you know that you're not the only one. There's a lot of other athletes just like you around your age, or it could be, you know, not your age, but still stuck of actually, I don't think I can do it. It's ocean, I need, I need my wetsuit. I don't know how to swim. What would you uh, advise those athletes? Your old, the old Gloria, if you see Gloria there or another athlete just like you back then, what would you, do you have any advice, top three advice that you can give us? Catch your dream, catch your dream. Don't let it go, um, work for it, earn it and find the right people to take you because you alone, you, you can do a lot of things alone but you need people around you because those people that are cheering up for you are a bridge to conquer your quest. And determination and resilience, and it's okay to be tired and Aww. it's okay to sometimes feel down. But the most important thing is that nobody knows that sometimes, but yeah. only you. So you have to put yourself on the top and remind yourself that this is your quest and you can conquer it. So like I said, uh, I shared this to you before we leave here, because this is one of the characteristics of Gloria. Stay positive, mm -hmm. always smiling. I'm serious, this is uh, smiling, even though at the time she was new, look at this, all the smiles, right? Is that, you're amazing, Gloria. Even Tony, thank, thank you, Gloria. You're an amazing woman, God bless. Yeah, really a uh, privilege to have you, Gloria. Thank you so much in sharing your story. I hope those who are actually listening to this or viewing this, you've gotten a lot from what Gloria said. I think she's an inspiration, whether whatever level you are in sports, whether you've done so many things already, the things that she shared, where she's coming from. If you think about it, if Gloria can do it, anyone can. Let's just apply the mindset, her, the practice that she's been doing, all right? So if you also need some help, you know, in getting your goals and actually being more confident, touching based training, nutrition, injury prevention, 
uh, mental fitness and race strategy. Just hashtag triathlon now, hashtag triathlon now. And my teammates will actually uh, contact you to give you some help. Or if you want to contact Gloria or just follow her, oh my gosh, you're going to be so inspired. You're going to be so inspired. Really happy to have you all. You're a machine, Andrea said. Super inspiring. All right, Tony, Simon, good to have you. And again, if you're watching this replay, hashtag replay, I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to have more live shows next week and watch it. And I look forward to having you again. Thank you, Gloria. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for everything you do. You make a oh. difference. Oh, thank you so much, Gloria. All right, I'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Have a good week. <laughs>